So one question I get a lot is, what can we do in our bedding areas after we've cut them? So how do we keep them established as bedding? I'm going to talk about that today. I'm going to show you what my main go-to tool is going to be to clean up this very, very thick bedding area behind me and what else I'm going to do to keep this area so that the deer use it and it doesn't get too thick or outgrow its benefit. All right, here's going to be the main tool today. Got the steel FS131 and then I got the old brush blade on the end. Now I have not owned this tool before this summer but I've been around landowners that have used it and I love the versatility of it. So I'm going to take this and I'm actually going to clear out my trails, clear out my beds with it and then what I'll do is I'll come back through my bedding cut area which my bed bedding area is up over there but I'll come back through my bedding area um, three or four weeks after I do the clearing with the brush saw and I'll spray back the trails um, as well as spray out the beds. And I, when I do that, I either use ground clear. If I don't have ground clear on hand, I'll just use Roundup. Sometimes I'll mix in some 2,4-D. Two two um, you know, it just depends what I have on hand. I actually, at this time, there's some buckthorn in the, in the cut, I noticed. So I'll be using some triclopyr in the mix and maybe a little bit of Roundup. And that's what I'll use to, to spray off my beds. But yeah, that's the game plan because we, we don't want these areas to get too overgrown, too thick, uh, where the deer just can't penetrate them. So I'm going to clear it back and kind of breathe new life into this bedding cut. Alright, so let's take a little look at the uh, results here. You can see I got my cut trail heading in here. So again, like I said before... I'm going to let this sprout back because I need those leaves to be able to suck in the herbicide. I'm going to let it sprout back so that I can spray it because ultimately I want some nice bare dirt trails rolling through here. But that little brush saw did a number in this bedding area because you can see how it got exceedingly thick so we got a nice little tunnel cutting up there there was a bed right up through there I'll probably clear one right there when I come back through with the uh, the backpack sprayer but this thing had gotten so thick and so gnarly I just had to get in here and cut it back some because there were some beds that just were not accessible anymore because it be, had become so overgrown. You can see this brush saw just did awesome cutting these trails through here. So I just kind of swung it two, three feet, probably wide, two to three feet wide at most. I knocked it back. Here's a spot right back up in here. Like this one had really overgrown. There's going to be a perfect nook for a bed right up in there. You can see it can look right out. Cut this little escape out the back on this one. And at most, I think I spent. And this is a big bedding cut. It's probably an acre and a half. But I probably spent, I think it's seven now. Yeah, I was in here at about four, so about three hours with that saw. Beautiful bedroom right here. This was one that was grown in. Deer didn't have access to, so I cleared it out. You can see perfect escape out the back. I can run out front here, run off the side here. Some multiple little escapes. This bedroom is going to, this bedding area in general is just going to hold a ton of deer. Now if I would have done nothing, there's still deer in here. But this is just that fine tuning stuff. There's a perfect bedroom up in there, cutting out the back. And again, <clears throat> in this spot, I did lots of flush cuts, but I did hinge some trees and guess where the deer are bedding. They're bedding under those hinge cuts because what happens... When you do all flush cuts, 
is you get regeneration everywhere and you'll have to come back in and make sure that there's you know, spots for them to bed. Now they can find spots too in that area, but there's, there's more spots here because of these hinged trees. Because underneath when I got these, these denser canopied hinge, hinge spots, they make these beds where the vegetation doesn't grow as thick because of the little bit of shade that's cast from these hinged treetops. Actually got another nice bed right up in there, right up through there. But did I bring the canopy to the ground? Well sure, on a few small areas, but still 80 to 85 percent of this bedding cut is full sun exposure and it got thick and gnarly as you can see so I actually want to bring the canopy to the ground in a few isolated spots so I have places for the deer to bed <clears throat> you can see that bedroom back in there just an awesome awesome little spot And that, uh, that little brush saw was worth every penny, though. Man, did it, it do work here. I'm going to have to figure out how to uh, sharpen it. I did ding up against a couple of rocks. Still was cutting good, but... To find, it looked like I can sharpen it with a file, so... That's what's great about YouTube. Find a good YouTube video on how to... Get it cutting good again. I mean, it was cutting good when I was done, but hitting those rocks never feels good. So yeah, this is a, just a great, great, great bedroom. Got a little hatch cutting out this way. And you can see with the aspen, wow. Those were flush cut, obviously. They're actually logged out. But holy cow, did it get thick. Talk about a jungle. This is what we want. Literally, this bedding area, as you can see, it's bare dirt down there. Killed a lot of buckthorn in there, and I did see there's still some in this bedding area. So when I come back, I'm definitely going to have triclop here in the backpack sprayer because I will be spot treating the buckthorn I see. But yeah, this. With this aspen regen, with some hinge trees, with some flush cut trees, with stump sprouts, this bedding area literally has everything a deer could ever want. And what do I do? I do probably one total day's worth of maintenance. I plan on doing that every year. I'll just cut some stuff back, keep these trails open, keep the beds open. You know, there will be a point. This aspen regen has still got plenty of browse at the deer's level. There's going to be a point where that'll get reset too. I'll be in here with the chainsaw and I'll be cutting it. Yeah, it's going to be some work, but you know what? When you cut a tree, I've said it before, that successional clock is ticking. So when you cut a tree, you got to expect that down the road there's going to be some work again. You can never just do this stuff and then... It's done. I don't know if there's any maintenance free habitat improvement. Eventually you gotta gotta get back to work. And here you can see this is a spot I did a actually this winter I did a video where I did a pretty hard edge feather between the conifer bedding and this thick bedding area behind me. Cause I'm trying to redirect the deer right towards a, a stand there. So I got a trail cutting out right here. And then I have the one cutting out over there. I, I allowed them to cut out here because we're going to have another stand up over here. And normally you can't, you can't redirect the deer for hundreds of yards. You know, that edge feather is probably uh, maybe 80 to 100 yards and that's getting a little long. How much you get too long they find little holes and pockets to to sneak through but there I left two very obvious trails on either end so hopefully they uh they will they will they should follow the script and do what they need to do another little bedroom right here 
cutting back out into the main drag. Now here's some dead buckthorn. Yeah, look at that. Triclopeer smoked it. So it was getting a little tall. Foliar treated it. So that might be a little bit tall to foliar treat, but I do not see any stump sprouting off that. Because that's what happens. Sometimes you can just top kill this stuff. But then you'll notice about this time, well, even earlier in the summer, it'll start sprouting again down at the stump. But this one is uh, crispy. So it looks like it's here. Hammered it. Got a nice trail cutting right up towards the sand that way. Got another trail. That's that main one coming off the edge of the edge feather right there. But you just look up for a second, man. Look at that. Three years worth of growth. That is absolutely insane. But still, tons and tons of forage at the deer's level. I mean, look at that. This, some of these are a little bit higher hinge cuts. Still, tons of forage at the deer deer's level. Yeah, the leaders got out of the deer's reach, but they sprout all the way up the stump. You can see, I mean, look at this one right here. You can just see how it sprouts all the way. A lot of times right at the base, actually, these box elder will sprout. So, still plenty of forage. Eventually, we will be cutting again, knocking this back. But for now, you know what? The deer are appreciating what uh, what we have for them. Again, that one sprouted up the stump. Yep, main leader got out of the deer's reach. That's okay. That would happen whether or not I'd cut it at uh, ankle level or uh, chest level. Eventually, that uh, that leader's going to get past the deer's reach, and it's going to start growing a tree again. That's what happens when you cut a tree, even when you stump flush cut them down low those stump sprouts will eventually get past the deer so but looking pretty good this is going to be a pretty dynamite spot this fall one more day in here with the backpack sprayer probably wait about maybe even three three-ish weeks three to four weeks probably mid-july come in i'll spray it back and we'll call it good all right you all take care God bless.